What's up guys, in this video I want to show you step by step how to evaluate a trigonometric function using an angle on the unit circle. Now in this video I actually want to evaluate all six trigonometric functions, but we're going to work on this step by step. So what I want you to understand first of all is that we have an angle that is on the unit circle. So the first thing that I want you to do is just go ahead and graph the angle in standard form. Okay, now I graph that angle rather quickly in standard form because obviously I've been doing this a lot. But if you're kind of like, how do you know how to graph that? Like, what'd you do exactly to get to that point? Like, make sure that you know how to graph your trigonometric angles. But just to be nice, let's just kind of do a, a runaround of like how to graph your angles, right, in standard form. So we're gonna have an xy axis, right? And so we're always gonna start here with our standard form, which is gonna be the, the initial side, which is gonna be the positive x axis. We're gonna rotate counterclockwise, and then we need to rotate five pi over six. You might say, well, why is five pi over six right here? Right, well, you gotta remember, halfway around circle is pi, right? So if I could break that up into six equal sections, I'm not gonna be the best here, but hopefully you can see that one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So I'm gonna go five of them, right? So you can see that's why I kinda of did this arrow where I'm gonna rotate it, one, two, three, four, five. That's where it's gonna lie, all right? Okay, so that's the first step. And a lot of times you can do this in your head, which is the good thing. It just takes a little bit of practice to do this. The next step that I want you to be able to do is to find the corner point where your angle is gonna intersect on the unit circle. Okay, and again, you can see that I found that point rather quickly. And you're like, how did you know how to find that point so quickly? Well, there's one thing that I tell my students all the time. Like, I don't want you to memorize the unit circle, please do not memorize the unit circle because it is a complete waste of time. What I do want you to memorize is at least the first quadrant of the unit circle because that is something that is going to be used constantly throughout um, your study of trigonometry. So you do need to know those coordinates in the first quadrant. And then all I did was I knew that this quadrant, this point right here, right, was kind of square root of three over two comma one half. All right, and that angle was pi over six. So all I did in my head was I said, hey, Second quadrant, this is a negative, and that's a positive, right? The x coordinate is negative, the y coordinate is positive. So all I did, I just recognized that this is a reflection about my y axis, so therefore the x and y coordinates are gonna be exactly the same. However, now, all I simply need to do is just negate my x value, and now I have my coordinate point, okay? Now you gotta remember, when I graph this on standard form, this is on an x and a y axis. So therefore, this coordinate point is gonna be an x, and that is going to be a y, right? So now we have an x and a y for a given point that lies on the unit circle. That is all we need to be able to evaluate our six trigonometric functions. Why? Well, because now I can just evaluate. And again, why can you just evaluate? Well, remember, the definition of our trigonometric functions, when we have a coordinate point that is on the unit circle, Sine is equal to the y coordinate, cosine is equal to the x coordinate, tangent is equal to the y over the x coordinate, and then we have our reciprocal functions, which is just you know the reciprocals of that. But again, that is only for the points of our angle when they intersect the unit circle. Okay, that's very important, and we'll come back to that you know in some future videos. So, in case you just forgot everything that I just said, if I said what is the sine of five pi over six, that is going to be the y coordinate of where that angle intersects my unit circle, and you can see over here. Right, I found the point, which in this case is negative square root of three over two comma one half. So my y coordinate is just equal to one half. The cosine of five pi over six represents the x coordinate, which in this case is gonna be a negative square root of three over two. And then my tangent of five pi over six is going to be the y coordinate over the x coordinate. Now here, we're gonna have a little bit of math, but that's okay, let's have a little fun. So I have a one half divided by a negative square root of three over two. Okay, now I hopefully you recognize that I have a fraction in my numerator, a fraction in my denominator. Well guys, both those fractions are being divided by two. So what I can do is I can just actually simplify this to a negative one over a square root of three. Now, if I wanted to simplify that, I could just rationalize the denominator by multiplying by the square root of three on the top and bottom, and I'll get a negative square root of three over three. Okay, and if you didn't like that idea of how I just got rid of those twos, multiply a two on the top and the bottom, right? That will get rid of those twos very quickly from there. All right, so now it's time to do our reciprocals and hopefully we don't have to do as much math um, over here because we can just flip, flip our answers that we have over here. So let's go ahead and figure out what we got. The cosecant of five pi 
over six is just gonna be one over y, which again, one over y is just going to be the reciprocal. So that's gonna be pretty easy. That's just gonna be a two. The secant of five pi over six is gonna be one over x. In this case, that's gonna look a little weird. So I'm actually gonna do the work over here. All right, so in this case, we're gonna have a one over a negative square root of three over two. Again, what I'm gonna do is multiply by my reciprocal on the top as well as on the bottom. Okay, and now you can see, I got, again, I have a radical in the denominator just like I did over here. So what I'm gonna do is rationalize the denominator by multiplying by a square root of three on the top and bottom. And now I'm gonna get a final answer of two square root of three divided by a negative three, because square root of three times square root of three is just going to be a three. And the negative could go up top, it can go bottom, or it can go in the front. And the last one is, I'm gonna give you a little trick here, a little bonus at the end. So the last one, you have to reciprocate this. Now, if you reciprocate one over square root of three over three, you're gonna have a radical in the denominator, then you have to rationalize, and it's kind of a lot of a mess, it's a lot of work. But one thing you can do, um, again, notice it's a negative, right? Don't forget about that is rather than reciprocating this, you can just go ahead and reciprocate that. So if you reciprocate a one over square root of three, that's just gonna be a square root of three over one, which again, it's just gonna be square root of three. Don't forget the negative though. Whew, all right, that was quite a bit of work, but hopefully through this step-by-step -step process, you can go evaluate any trigonometric function given a point from an angle that intersects on the unit circle. Whew, that was a lot. But hopefully by following this step-by-step -step process, you can go and evaluate your trigonometric functions on your own. But if you think you might need a little bit more help, especially if you have your angle in the third quadrant where everything's negative, well, that's coming up in the next video.